Greetings, friends and viewers, and welcome to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. We're excited to have you with us again as Ian invites us into his kitchen to learn some tips and secrets of how to make one of his most famous dishes. Hi, my name is Ian Brandt from Sage's Cafe, Vegetarian Organic, Vertical Diner, Extreme Cuisine, and Cali's Natural Foods in Salt Lake City. And we'll be preparing a mushroom stroganoff with fresh pasta, locally made fresh pasta. Uh, we'll also make a brown rice risotto style mushroom stroganoff dish um, for anyone that has a, a gluten allergy. The ingredients that we have is we have some whole black pepper, and then we have some dried thyme, a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of white pepper, some tamari, which is wheat-free tamari. That's a fresh sage. Now we have fresh winter savory. We also have our uh, Redmond real salt, which is uh, the full mineralized real salt. And I, I love talking about this because this is a high quality product and it really influences the quality of our food, I think. And then we also have some fresh dill for the garnish and some fresh Italian flat leaf parsley for the garnish. So we're making the mushroom base and then we're making the tofu sour cream base. We blend them together in the pan and that's what ends up being the final dish. So for the tofu sour cream, the ingredients that we're using are the morning new silken tofu. We have some olive oil. We have some vinegar, some salt, a little bit of evaporated cane juice, and some lemon juice. Those items together create the zippy taste of a sour cream and the creaminess that then blends into the mushroom base and creates this earthy, creamy pasta sauce or rice sauce. At this time, I'm gonna start uh, preparing the dish. We already have some uh, portobello mushrooms. We've taken the stem off. We've also taken the gills out. So by removing that, you take away the inky color as well as any dirt that could be hidden in the, in the gills. And then we have some locally grown onions, garlic, and we have some bell peppers. And we'll break all these ingredients down, put them in the pan, saute them, and reduce them a little bit add some fresh herbs at the end, and then, once again, cook the pasta and bring all this together with the sour cream. So I'll start by breaking down the garlic. And so, you know, to break down the garlic, sometimes it helps just to take the top off right here. So, if I had a clove a little bit bigger than this, then I'd probably use two. So I'll probably use maybe three or four of these smaller cloves. So we can just smash them and then we'll mince them. And we're gonna actually cook the um, onions first. It takes a little more time to cook down the onions and the bell peppers. And then we'll add the garlic right after that. So we'll go with three garlic cloves. So we can alter the recipe a little bit. We just don't want to alter it so much that it changes its natural important components. So that garlic, that's about where we want it. Just kind of minced up like that. And what the recipe is calling for, a half a cup of bell pepper and three quarters of a cup of diced onions. I like to cut my bell pepper in rows and you can remove anything as necessary and then dice this up. And we want this to be fairly small diced. And then the recipe is calling once again for three quarters of a cup of yellow onion. Take the outside skin off. You know, and this could be used to make soup stock. There we have our three, three quarters of a cup of yellow onions. And you can also use white onions in this recipe. There's a couple different ways you can cut the portobellas. It's really up to you. You could cube them. That's one method. Uh, the other method is kind of slice them in these nice, nice little wedges. And I think this looks the most attractive, are these little wedges. And the recipe's calling for two portobello caps, once again, de-stemmed and de-gilled. We were able to find some fresh herbs in the garden, some hardy fresh herbs in the garden that can be used today in our recipe. And uh, sage gives it, uh, the sauce, a nice earthiness. So we're just gonna pluck off the leaves that I know are gonna taste the best and we'll end up putting them into the sauce. So then we have the winter savory. We'll just take the leaves off of the stem. This is also a really hardy herb and can outlast 
uh, even a snowstorm. And so we're gonna just mince this up really small. Once again, these leaves are really hearty and really strong tasting, and we don't wanna have too much of that flavor coming through in the sauce, so we wanna cut this up very small. And so now we have all of our ingredients ready. We're gonna saute the mushrooms, the onions, and bell peppers, and then we'll add in some garlic and we'll reduce the sauce down. And I use iron skillets at my house. In a restaurant setting, I tend to use the stainless steel saucepan, but since we're preparing this with the understanding that a lot of you guests will be preparing this at home, I highly promote the idea of using iron uh, skillets because it's just uh, it creates a better flavor to your food as well as it's probably the healthiest option. So we'll throw the onions in, bell peppers. And once again, we're going to hold off on the garlic. We're going to hold off on the herbs. We throw in a, a pinch of white pepper, a pinch of the cayenne. We're going to let these flavors come together at the same time. A little cayenne, a little pinch of dried thyme. And then at this time, we have, once again, the whole peppercorn. I already loaded this grinder. This is a great little grinder. It's a coffee grinder. And you can grind a half a cup of pepper in probably maybe about two minutes. So you just load that up, give that a couple cranks, and then toss that in. We're also going to throw the salt in right now. And what that's going to do is it's going to draw the moisture out of these vegetables. And that's called sweating. And so the recipe is calling for uh, sesame oil and olive oil. I didn't have sesame oil. Sesame oil does add an earthiness to the dish. But with our olive oil, our extra virgin olive oil, we'll cook this at a low heat, not to destroy the components of the olive oil. And once again, we can alter these recipes, and we'll see how that rolls out. It should taste great. And so the recipe calls for two tablespoons of sesame oil and three tablespoons of olive oil. Instead, I'm just going to basically use five tablespoons of olive oil. So if we're dealing with five tablespoons, we're really dealing with about a third of a cup. So I can actually estimate that in here by using my eyes and put it in here. Most of that oil is going to actually be absorbed into the mushroom. You can make this without any oil too. There's nothing to say that you can't do that as well. So this is just um, one way of preparing this. And then we'll put, lo throw the mushrooms in. We're going to saute everything together. The only thing that's not going in are the fresh herbs and also the garlic. The garlic cooks a lot faster and we don't want that to burn. And so now we'll just take this over to the burner, saute the mushrooms, bell peppers, onions, and some of the other spices. And I like using a uh, wooden spoon at my home. And so basically what I'm demonstrating to you is how I prepare food at home. And that's a really nice thing. Uh, preparing food at home is, is what I consider to be the, the ultimate. Even though everyone likes to eat out, uh, I'm always trying to promote eating at home. What you'll see here is you'll see the oil will be absorbed into the mushrooms within the first minute of cooking. And what we're going to do is caramelize the onions, fully cook the green bell peppers, and bring all the spices in together into the first stage of preparation here. And as it is slow to react to heating up, the pan will also react slowly to cooling down. So we're going to turn it down a little bit so that the olive oil doesn't burn and try to get it at the right temperature. When we're bringing the tofu sour cream and blending it with this sauce, a little bit of that oil will also be absorbed into that sauce. And so it'll, it'll blend nicely and it'll create a very rich consistency. Um, what, I, what I try to focus on is providing an experience for my guests in the restaurants that allow them to desire to eat vegetarian. Once you can get someone engaged in eating vegetarian, then you can start discussing the next step in eating vegetarian, which is eating super healthy vegetarian. And we'll just let that go for a few minutes here. So on top of the plate, we will have some nice fresh sprigs of Italian parsley and fresh dill. But we'll also mince some up for the edge of the plate. And so the Italian parsley can you know, cut the stems off. And what I like to do is I like to stack. That's another technique of chopping. And that's where you continuously add to the other top so you can get a really fine chop. So once you get to this point, break it down a little bit more. With a very sharp knife, you get less bruising, you keep your color nice, don't get a brown color coming through with your fresh herbs. It stays green longer, 
I always like to make sure that in the restaurants that our guests interact with their food and they're not just eating but they're also interacting with their food and they understand what they're eating they they can see the colors the smells once again the chef is preparing food with all of their senses engaged and the customer is also consuming the food with all of their senses engaged um, with my experience in the food industry I worked as a server before I became a chef and that's allowed me to have a, a different perspective on uh, food preparation um, I'm always trying to prepare my food for the guest, not for my own ego. And that's actually, I think, very critical in the food industry. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com slash VEG. If the world were to go 100% vegetarian right now, the good effect of it will be seen within more or less 60 days, eight short weeks. And what kind of earth would we live in? To be eaten again. Things will be more lush for abundance. People will feel happier, even without reason. They will not know why they feel happy. And food will be enough everywhere. River will run plentiful again. Disaster will cease. Heaven will smile on human. And good wishes will be fulfilled. That is a kind of Eden. We say that when the yellow onions are about 75% translucent, that it's about ready to go. And I'd say that's about right. If you look at this, that's, you know, it's about 75% translucent. So the garlic can go in. Out of anything preparing European style food or any uh, Asian foods that have a lot of garlic, that is probably the most crux position of any sauce, is cooking uh, everything to the point where you just don't, do not burn the garlic. It's okay if the garlic has a roasted type flavor, a golden brown color, but you just don't want it to ever turn black and uh, actually burn. And so now that we're right there, we can uh, deglaze with our water and our wheat-free tamari. And this is actually going to prepare enough that you'll be able to have this dish in a couple of different ways. This dish, this dish could make a great pizza sauce. This dish could make a great filling for uh, lasagna. It's a great foundational sauce that can be used in other applications. I've prepared this over polenta. I've prepared this with mashed potatoes. It can be prepared with gnocchi. Once you have the base sauce, you can apply it to many different dishes. And that's something very important that I want everyone to walk away from with this uh, cooking show is that it's important to prepare not just enough for one family meal, but maybe a little extra so that you're not wasting your time in the kitchen. You can have a little bit left over for the next day or the following day. And in this process, this slow cooking process, all the flavors will come together, kind of like a soup stock or a soup does. So what we're doing is, as you can see right here, in terms of the consistency of this broth, what we want to do is reduce that to half the volume in the course of about 15 minutes. For our tofu sour cream, once again, it'll be blended with our stroganoff mushroom base. We take the Morinu tofu, this is great stuff in a vegetarian kitchen, this is pretty much um, critical to making really amazing textured sauces and desserts and anything you can imagine. And so we'll take the Morinu tofu, put it in the blender. This is just a standard home blender. You, know, you don't need fancy equipment to prepare fancy food. So we're going to throw the salt in. We're just going to throw all the ingredients that go into making the tofu sour cream. We have uh, just simple distilled vinegar. The olive oil, you'll taste it in this tofu sour cream. But if we're blending this into uh, another sauce that already has olive oil in it, it really doesn't matter. So once again, I want to give you the flexibility 
of using different ingredients in your recipes. Then we have the evaporated cane juice. This is lemon juice that's organic in the bottle. If you're pressing your own juice, pressed juice is twice as powerful to the palate as bottled fresh pressed juice. We'll blend this up and then you'll, uh, you'll be able to use this in other recipes. Uh, you could use this to make nachos, you could use this um, to make uh, as a garnish for enchiladas. And to make your tofu sour cream nice and thick, you basically you don't want to add any water, but you do have to stir a little bit. So we're going to stir this up, break the tofu up a little bit, and then it'll come back together down in the bottom of the blender. You want to get in there and scrape the edges down, regardless of what kind of blender you have, because uh, with this kind of sauce, it, what's going to impress your guests or your family the most is when that silken tofu has absolutely zero chunks in it. And we'll call that good. So that's what you're left with is a velvet smooth texture right there. So. And at this point in time, our sauce is ready for the fresh herbs. Once again, this is the winter savory and the sage. And we'll throw that in and give it a few stirs. And as you can see, our, our sauce is thickening up a little bit from the vegetables. So that's kind of what you're looking for is about that consistency. And you can just then cool this in your fridge yeah. and this can be used uh, for other recipes, other sauce bases. It's a really nice base ingredient to even a pasta sauce with tomatoes. Anything's possible once you complete the first stage like this in preparation. And so what we'll do is we're gonna basically go to step two. And we're gonna cook this two different ways. One gluten free and so we'll have that as our gluten free spoon. I, I try to separate every utensil for gluten free. You just don't know how sensitive your guests are. Basically what we'll do is it's approximately 50-50. 50% 50, 50 of this base with 50% of the tofu sour cream. And so we'll just eyeball and portion that out. We're gonna start boiling pasta. Pasta this thick takes yeah, about three to four minutes. You want this to enter into the boiling water and it just shocks it and it firms it up right away. If you use water that's not at a boil, it will kind of melt the flour away and it'll get gummy. Dry pasta, fresh pasta, you want it to be going into the hottest water you can get. So we'll start with that. And when that gets to the point where it's floating is usually about when it's done. I like to look at color. You could set a timer for three minutes. What we'll do is we'll have the rice go into this pan. This is just a simple long grain brown rice. And we'll portion out uh, a spoonful of the sour cream. Okay. And then we'll portion out you know, approximately a spoonful of our base right here. You have to be careful with the tofu sour cream. If it's too hot, it'll break and that nice creaminess will be lost. And so we'll bring that down in temperature and we'll let it just warm up. And then in this other pan, we'll be doing the same thing, but for the pasta dish, you know, approximately a spoon of each. So, so we have about that much and we'll match that with the sour cream. And I think we're ready to get our pasta. See how it's falling apart right there? That's just where you want it to be. So take one out and bring it over here. And we could cut it. And then eat it. It's ready to go. All these noodles put into the sauce. You can dr drop a little bit of water in, that's okay. And then what you're left with is just basically bringing the sauce into the noodles to create a nice consistency. A little bit of the flour from the noodles actually forms a nice consistency for the sauce. It'll thicken the sauce to another level and then we'll be able to mold it nicely on the plate, forming a nice pile on the center of the plate. So what we're doing now is we're going through the final plating and, and this is the best part I think because that's where it all comes together and then you can enjoy your food. Um, what we have here is our sauce with the noodles, this is our mushroom stroganoff, and our pepperadelli wide noodle, fresh made locally in Utah here by some friends of mine. And we have these really nice plates and we can kind of position the pasta 
right about here. What we want to do is we want to get the noodles out first and then try to get those mushrooms or at least a few of those mushrooms on top because that's kind of that's kind of the king of the plate right there is those portobello mushrooms. And so we'll put those on top. We can kind of position them so they look really attractive. And then we have is a little bit of dill. And dill is used in a lot of northern European food, which is kind of where this originates. It's kind of like a, a German type um, Italian fusion. And we can kind of throw a little, little parsley leaf here, you know. Let's see. And we could also throw in some fresh ground pepper. Just a little bit of that around the outside. Gives it another flavor profile by having the extra black pepper around the outside. And then what we have here is we have our risotto style long grain brown rice mushroom stroganoff. And what I have here is, this is kind of an exciting way to plate this up. And we could plate it up straight, but I think that with food, it always looks best when you kind of change the perspective a little bit. So what we do here is really carefully not to spill on the outside, put it in this sushi form. We fill this mold up with the stroganoff and the rice. We want to kind of put some of those mushrooms on top because once again, that's our king. So what we do here is, this is now formed. And what we'll do here is put a few of these mushrooms on top. We'll take the rice off the mushrooms and it's, this is really, this is going to be cool. And then put maybe a couple of these on top. And so there we are with our risotto style uh, gluten-free portobello mushroom stroganoff. And then we'll finish that off with a little bit of fresh herbs. We can add some this Italian flat leaf parsley around the edge. We can throw a little sprig of this dill on top just for excitement and pleasure. The noodle dish looks pretty good, but this is really unique. And uh, this is kind of the stuff you do to impress your friends and, uh, and then they'll love you forever. And that's, that's really good. So what we have here is our gluten-free mushroom brown rice stroganoff and our pepper deli pasta portobello stroganoff, both prepared completely vegan uh, using sustainable ingredients and as healthy as possible. My name is Chef Ian Brandt. And thank you for watching Vegetarianism, The Noble Way of Living. We send many thanks to Chef Ian Brandt for introducing the creative and delicious possibilities of plant-based foods. May well-being and happiness accompany you always.
For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash veg. How much money would we save if the world becomes vegan? We are now at the point that um, science has more and better numbers on the effects of uh, changing the diet and eating less meat. A study by the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency found that global dietary change would reduce the cost of mitigating global warming. The cost to lower atmospheric greenhouse gas levels. 40 trillion US dollars by 2050. A global shift to a low meat diet could save 50% of total mitigation cost. A global shift to a meat-free diet could save 70% of total cost. A global shift to an animal-free vegan diet would save climate mitigation costs by more than 80%. That's a substantial cost reduction in getting to the uh, same climate targets. Not only governments, but individuals save too. It's much cheaper than buying uh, photovoltaic cells on your house or buying uh, a hybrid car. It's a very easy way to change your uh, buying behaviour and uh, have a, a fantastic uh, quality of your meal. We still have a chance to halt global warming and should be optimistic. We don't have much time, but we still have time. We meanwhile do our best by adopting the quickest and the most efficient measure to reverse climate change. We must change to a vegan diet ourselves so that we become a part of the solution. To help the government to change, uh, we can write letters explaining how a vegan diet is a solution for the planetary crisis is the most practical way to prevent future calamities due to global warming. Because the plant-based lifestyle is more sustainable and opens up land, it restores the balance of our ocean and forest and preserves our finite natural resources. This is truly the best way to restore our environment and ensure the highest degree of peace. Such a simple solution. Be in veg, that's it. Be veg, go green to save the planet. For more urgent details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash SOS.